Well, welcome to the 700 Club. For today's headlines, let's go over to the CBN News Desk. Gordon, there could be a breach in the reactor core at one unit of the damaged Japanese nuclear power plant. Officials fear that could mean more serious radioactive contamination. Charlene Israel has the story. Officials became suspicious of the breach after two workers waded into water 10,000 times more radioactive than normal and suffered skin burns when the water splashed over their protective boots. They were evacuated from the plant and rushed to the hospital. These workers had direct contact with highly radioactive water touching their feet, touching their skin. This means that they will come down with radiation burns. They know that some of them may not come out of this accident alive. Officials say this latest threat is yet another setback in attempts to gain control of the plant two weeks after the deadly earthquake and tsunami engulfed the facility and knocked out its crucial cooling system. Radiation from the plant has been showing up in raw milk and vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower. Tokyo continues to wrestle with fears over tainted tap water after test results showed levels had shot up above what's legally safe for infants. We've been using tap water to, for um, cooking and other things for the children, but we've uh, changed to uh, pure water for all the cooking and uh, drinking water. Meanwhile, the death toll in the country has risen to over 10,000. 18,000 people are still listed as missing. Charlene Israel, CBN News. Operation Blessing is on the ground in Japan, helping the survivors with literally tons of food and water, plus kerosene for heating and other important supplies. You can help by sending your donation to Operation Blessing at Disaster Relief, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463, or call 1-800-759-0700, or you can log on to ob.org. NATO has agreed to enforce the no-fly zone over Libya now. So far, the zone has proved to be effective, but it is taking a lot of work. CBN's Chuck Holton is in Italy, where some of the American forces are stationed. American aircraft continue to come and go from the Naval Air Station here at Siganella in support of Operation Odyssey Dawn. But as pressure mounts in Washington for the Obama administration to find a way out of the conflict and minimize costs to the taxpayers, the military personnel here are going to continue to support their brothers in arms in the skies over Libya. Lieutenant Matt Knight is the base public affairs officer. And Naval Air Station Saginaw is a logistics base. This is our historical mission is to support Six Fleet, NATO, and combatant commanders. Uh, in this operation, that support has just become greater. However, it's still our normal mission. It's just the, the scale and the scope has increased. Uh, they were flying from here to Tunisia to Cairo, taking refugees out before this started. So we started as a humanitarian and then uh, shifted into supporting ongoing operations mandated by the UN Resolution 1973. Chuck Holton, CBN News at Siganella Naval Air Station. And back here at home, Tea Party favorite Michelle Bachman may be getting ready for a White House bid. The Republican representative from Minnesota hasn't confirmed plans to run, but she may form an exploratory committee as early as May. We will have an interview with Michelle Bachman next week on the 700 Club. The woman killed in the terrorist attack at a Jerusalem bus stop this week was a Christian. She had been working for 20 years translating the Bible into the language of a tribe in Togo. Mary Gardner was from Scotland and she went to Israel at the beginning of the year to hone her translating skills at a ministry called Home for the Bible Translators. Two days after its first major terror attack in years, Jerusalem held a marathon, an event that it plans to hold annually. Chris Mitchell has that story. Runners from 40 nations came to participate in Jerusalem's inaugural marathon. I mean, I couldn't pass out the, my first marathon being the Jerusalem Marathon, so I'm really excited. Jerusalem's mayor, Nir Barkat, sponsored the marathon. You know, many marathon runners in the world consider where they have not yet run. And now Jerusalem is one of those uh, short list of cities that you have to do a marathon. In addition to the marathon, runners could choose to run a half marathon a 10K or 4.2K race. More than 10,000 runners ran in the four races. They get to run near many of Jerusalem's sites, including the Jaffa Gate and through the streets of Jerusalem's old city. But two days before the marathon, a terrorist bomb exploded in Jerusalem that killed one and wounded dozens. It threatened the race, but the city decided to press on 
with its plans. On Wednesday, terrorists struck the streets of Jerusalem. But two days later on Friday, thousands of runners filled the streets in a visible sign that despite any threat of terror, life goes on in Jerusalem. We will not be terrorized. We will continue living our lives, opening up Jerusalem for the benefit of the world to enjoy. There are no cancellations and our plans are on track. The city plans to make the race an annual event. They already have a date set for next year's marathon, March 16, 2012. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Now let's go back over to Terry to see what's ahead on today's 700 Club. Well, coming up, a businesswoman with a big house and a company car. I never dreamed that I would find myself unemployed. And they said that we may not get our last paychecks, that the following Monday our insurance benefits would cease to exist. See what saved this woman from having to sell her home after this. Coming up later, NFL gunslinger Kurt Warner goes for the Hail Mary. Short brown spiky hair with the mini skirt on and the, and the red boots. And fumbles. Seriously, I, I'm not playing a game, so I'm 25, divorced mother of two. If I never see again, I totally understand. Meet the teammate that got him back in the game. We would honestly either argue about um, Jesus or we would decide that night to make out. Today, an ounce of gold buys you two fine suits. In ancient Rome, that same ounce of gold bought you two fine togas. For over 5,000 years, gold has maintained its store of value. Once upon a time, the U.S. dollar was as good as gold because it was backed by gold. The value of all paper money sooner or later falls to zero. Printing paper money is like an unlimited credit card for politicians until history cancels their credit line. The good news is that they can't print gold. So when you put part of your nest egg in gold, it becomes safe from politicians crashing the dollar. Find out more about the best performing assets of the 21st century from the best company in the country, Swiss America. Call or visit online now for their free educational kit. Jennifer Dickinson was living her dream job. Great job, beautiful home, and a company car. But when the recession hit, Jennifer watched it all disappear overnight. Jennifer Dickinson always wanted to live in a big house in the country, so she worked hard as a national account manager to achieve her goal. She never thought her livelihood was in jeopardy. I never dreamed that I would find myself unemployed. But that's exactly what happened when the business she worked for went bankrupt overnight. They said that we may not get our last paychecks. We most likely would not be reimbursed for any outstanding expenses, that the following Monday, our insurance benefits would cease to exist. Those things combined cost Jennifer close to $5,000. In addition, she lost her company car and her gas card, which meant large bills she had never had before. Uh, I'm single, so there was no one to share the expenses with. Um, the mortgage and the expense of having a home was all on me. So when her savings ran out, Jennifer put her house on the market. Month after month, she looked for work and for ways to cut costs. She had been a faithful CBN partner since 1998 and wasn't sure if she could continue giving. I was tempted to decrease my giving or maybe stop giving altogether for a while. But um, I, just, I just settled it early that it was not a choice for me, that you know God had been faithful to me. There was no way that I was going to give to Him and give to the needs of other people through Operation Blessing and Orphan's Promise and CBN, and, and that the Lord would not make a way for me. Jennifer was at church one Sunday when someone gave her an idea. One of the elders suggested that I be very specific in my petition to God about the type of job that I wanted, the position that I wanted, and all of 
all of the details. Jennifer made her list and didn't hold back. She contacted the 700 Club and asked CBN to agree with her in prayer. Then while she was watching a special 700 Club webcast dedicated to overcoming financial difficulty, she got a call. And it was the company that I had written down on the paper. That was only a week later. They said they had my resume and I was one of the candidates that they wanted to interview. Two months later, Jennifer got the job. I got everything that I wrote on that list, the position, the salary, the company car. Jennifer didn't have to sell her house after all. It was one of the most exciting parts of getting my job was to pick up the phone and call the realtor and say, you know, taking my house off the market. And what about all the savings that she lost? I just recently got my tax returns and I was able to put that into savings. So I'm saving again and I am getting back on track and God is restoring me. I, I think it's a miracle. Now Jennifer encourages others who are going through tough economic times. When we are in times of need, that could possibly be the best time to give to others and to just release and let God have everything and give the principle of reciprocity an opportunity to work. He did it for me, and I know that He will do it for you. He will do it for you. He loves it when his kids keep track of these things, whether you keep track of the increase, or you say, Lord, here's, here's the job I want. Here are the details. Um, that way, you know when he's answered the prayer. When you start praying with specificity is the time that God really moves into action, because then, then you'll know that it was him. It wasn't based on your own effort. It was based on him and what he can do for you. Here it is from Psalms 37. Trust in the Lord. That's the first thing. Just trust him. Trust his word. Trust that he'll do what he says he's going to do. And then on our part, do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Jennifer learned that firsthand, that he will give her her heart's desire. Give her a dream job. Give her a dream home. Uh, enable her to stay. Enable her to prosper all because she was doing her part, which is doing good. So do that. Resolve today that you're going to trust God and do good. Terry? Well, right now we want to take you to a village in China. Children were getting a good education at their local school, but they were also getting sick from the school's drinking water. Ten-year-old Wu Ji is a star student at her small primary school in southern China. She especially loves physical education, and she pushes herself very hard in class. I love to run and skip rope with my classmates. Usually, I outrun and outskip everyone. Wu Ji's teacher says that she should always drink water after she exercises, so she doesn't get dehydrated. But many days, there's no fresh water available for the children. All we have is rain water that makes its way on the ground through old pipes and to our school. It's dirty and cloudy and not good to drink. We try to provide buckets of clean water for our students. But there's not much we can do. It still gets filled with pebbles and stones. The kids should not drink it, or they will get sick. It's difficult for children to learn when they don't have enough water in their bodies. I get so thirsty that I can't even focus on what is going on in class. There have been days that Wu Ji was so parched that she had to drink the dirty water at school. Recently, when she did this, she got very ill. She was sent home from school and unable to return. That's when CBN found out about the water problem at Wu Ji's school and built a well and a new water basin for the children. Now there's always clean water for the kids. They can wash their hands after playing and their faces after P.E. They can even take fresh water home to their families. As for Wu Ji, she doesn't have any more stomach aches, and there's always enough water for this young athlete. Whenever I turn on the tap, there is clean water falling out. It's very sweet and healthy. And because Wu Ji comes from a poor, single-parent home, CBN decided to pay for both her and her brother's education. 
Now there's nothing stopping these children from a bright future. Um, the CBN really helped us. They care about my children and about all the students at school. We never could have done this by ourselves. I'm so happy to everyone that helped me. I wish you a wonderful life and all my classmates say thank you too. You are providing clean drinking water not just for this child and her classmates, but also for the families in that village, and providing education for her, for her brother. This kind of thing is happening all around the world, and it happens because people like you join the 700 Club. If you're not a member of the 700 Club, it's a great day to partner with the rest of us to reach out to the world with the knowledge of the love of Jesus Christ and then be a part of these life-changing endeavors as well. You can join us by going to your phone and calling right now. Our number's toll-free. It's so simple, 1-800-759-0700. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. 65 cents a day, $20 a month makes you a 700 Club member. And when you call, if you say, I want to give through Pledge Express, that's electronic monthly giving, means your bank does all the work, you have none of the hassle, don't have to remember, no stamps, no envelopes. It saves us a lot in administrative costs, so we can put even more of your gift right into the lives of children like Wuji. So when you call and say that, we want to say thank you by sending you Power for Life teachings. Each month you'll get one of these, and we believe that they will touch your life and enhance your faith as well. So. Call now. Be a world changer. You can make a difference. Gordon? Well, up next, NFL superstar Kurt Warner and his wife, Brenda. We knew what we believed before the NFL gave us millions of dollars. So when the millions of dollars come, that's not who defines us. See how this famous couple met and what's kept them together for 20 years. Still ahead. Country music's Larry Gatlin talks about the pitfalls of fame. I didn't realize that show business was two words. I took care of the show. I didn't take very good care of the business. Later on today's 700 Club. Well, welcome today. We're talking about the law of expectation. You need to see this teaching that Gordon Robertson did on the law of expectation because it, it really changed the way you think about yourself. Definitely encouraged me to dream bigger. All things are possible. If you are at the lowest of your low, if you feel that you have no hope, the law of expectation will help you find hope by transforming your mind. In the next 60 seconds, we want you to qualify to be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Pick up the phone and get ready to start dialing when the number appears on your screen. Call the number on your screen now and we'll mail you a key. If your key opens the lock in your local direct buy club, you'll be the next $50,000 home makeover winner. Operators are standing by, so call right now. Direct Buy Club is already awarded over a million dollars, and someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? If the phone number is blinking, the phone lines are open. Call now to receive your key and an invitation to your local Direct Buy Club, where members can save thousands or more paying low direct from the source prices on big ticket items, like kitchen cabinets, home furnishings, flooring, bathroom fixtures, and so much more. Call now and get your key to winning a $50,000 home makeover. Someone is going to win the $50,000 home makeover. Why not you? Kurt Warner's rise from grocery clerk to NFL quarterback is the stuff that dreams are made of. And his romance with his wife, Brenda, reads like a movie script. Sports reporter Sean Brown talked with Kurt and Brenda about the journey that took them both to the top. Arizona Cardinals quarterback Kurt Warner is regarded as one of the best to ever play the game. He's been to the Super Bowl three times, winning Super Bowl 34 with the St. Louis Rams. Statistically, the four-time Pro Bowler is the second most accurate quarterback in the history of the NFL. In the 2008 season, he led the Cardinals to their very first Super Bowl appearance. But that's just one side of Kurt's story. The other side began over 20 years ago when he met his wife, Brenda. He was a struggling quarterback, and she was a single mom with two kids. You know, one of the first times I'd ever gone to the bar, um, wasn't much into it, but my roommates had kind of pulled me out to the bar and just noticed her from across the room. 
uh, you know, short brown spiky hair with the mini skirt on and the, and the red boots and dancing up a storm out there. And the two hit it off. And at the end of the night, Kurt tried to kiss her. And though Brenda was interested in him, she felt she needed to tell him about her situation. I, he leaned over to kiss me, and I thought, seriously, I, I'm not playing a game, so I'm 25, divorced mother of two. If I never see again, I totally understand. The next day, Kurt paid her a visit, and he was met at the door by her two-year-old son, Zach. Went over there, I guess, to see her, but really the whole encounter was about her kids that, you know, said hello, walked in the door, and immediately saw her kids. Uh, her son, Zachary, grabbed me by the hand started leading me around uh, the house. Zach warmed up to Kurt almost immediately, and it didn't seem to matter to Kurt that Zach was blind. And that made quite an impression on Brenda, who was watching them with her infant daughter, Jessie, in her arms. You know, um, there are things that are deal breakers, and those are kind of deal makers, where Zachary took his hand. Being blind, he didn't know who Kurt was walking in, but he just knew it was somebody new. And he walked in, laid on the floor with Zachary, wrestled him. Um, I sat Jesse down, and he just interacted with the kids. And I thought, this is something different. Kurt and Brenda's relationship grew, but Kurt's football career wasn't going well. He tried out with the Green Bay Packers, but going up against the likes of Brett Favre and Trent Dilfer didn't help. He was cut before the season even started. And now, with no job and no money, he moved into Brenda's parents' basement and got a job that only paid him $5.50 an hour. I mean, I took the infamous job of working nights at a grocery store. And it was, you know, I mean, so much of, of life is about pride. And, you know, here I am, you know, living in her parents' basement without a job. And, and I'm just thinking, you know, gosh, this, is, this isn't me. This isn't what I want to do. I don't want to be, you know, just kind of taken from everybody else and not given anything. Kurt and Brenda had a great relationship, but there were some things they didn't see eye to eye on, especially when it came to having a relationship with God. He would tell me, so, some detail and I'd say, well, show me that in the Bible. If you think that that's your core of your spiritual belief, show me. So we would honestly either argue about um, Jesus or we would decide that night to make out that night. It was one or the other. And that was our dating process and kind of weird. Um, he preferred to make out. I preferred to argue about Jesus until he finally got it. What was it that, that you believed? What, was what you believed in, was it right or you just didn't know where to well, find it? or? You know, I think I just believed in the story. You know, I understood the story. I understood that Jesus died on the cross. I always use the reference that he was kind of like my spare tire, that up to that point I was driving, I was in control, and if I ever needed him, I could jump back in the back and grab my spare tire and he could help me out in whatever trying time that was. Kurt and Brenda grew even closer, and Kurt felt the pressure to make enough money to marry and to have a family. So in 1995, he joined the Arena Football League with the Iowa Barnstormers. And when he did, he got more than he bargained for when his teammates invited him to a Bible study. It was in that process where, you know, I started to realize I really had no idea why I believed what I believed. Right. So I thought, okay, you know, they're asking me these questions. I'm going to figure out some answers for them. I'm going to start reading the Bible, and I'm going to find out why I believe what I believe. And it was through that process where, uh, as you open the Bible and you read the scriptures, it's obvious that it's all about Jesus and it's all about what he did on the cross and it's all about giving your life to him. And so in the process of trying to prove everybody around me wrong, uh, I ultimately proved them all right. Kurt realized he needed to make a change. Then Brenda had received news that her parents were killed when a tornado hit their town in Arkansas. I was hurting so much and yet he was there to just listen and not judge me and also be there for Jesse and Zach, my kids, because they lost their grandparents. I wasn't playing well on the football field. Uh, her parents were killed. Um, you know, and it was right around that time where I'd come to the realization that I needed to commit my life to Jesus. During their grief, Kurt gave his life to the Lord. And when he did, things began to change. He and Brenda married, and after leading the Barnstormers to two consecutive Arena Bowl appearances, he was offered a chance to play in the NFL Europe League for the Amsterdam Admirals. Then, in 1998, Kurt's dream to play in the NFL was realized when he signed with the St. Louis Rams. What changed? You know, what changed was that I no longer was looking at me, and I began looking at everybody around me and specifically looking at what God wanted for me. 
And that was a complete change for me. I realized that it wasn't about me, that if it works out in the NFL, it's because God wants me there and it's for me to do something for him. Kurt spent six seasons with the Rams, and after a season with the New York Giants, he moved on to the Arizona Cardinals. But that pales to his role as a husband and father of seven. He and Brenda have written a book about their life together entitled First Things First, with the underlying message of staying focused on God. You know, I had death hit me, I had divorce hit me, I had infidelity, I had special needs, um, child be affected. You don't know what's ahead, it's a fallen world. So I, I encourage people to see that if you build that foundation, then that's what matters. Just like our, our marriage, we knew what we believed before the NFL gave us millions of dollars. So when the millions of dollars come, that's not who defines us. That the NFL doesn't, the popularity, the fame and fortune, we have that foundation built beforehand. It doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect. And I think that's what people get the sense of when Okay, they see Kurt Warner and they know his story and, you know, her, Kurt and Brenda and the seven kids and everything's just perfect. And that's a huge part of this book is that it's not perfect. You know, her life, she's gone through struggles. I've gone through struggles. We still battle together. I mean, we you know, struggle raising kids, you know, but the thing, like she said, is that we always know that God's with us and God's leading us and God's going to work it together no matter where we screw up. I don't know how we do it, you know without him. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think back to those years when I tried to do it by myself and I just, I think about my life now and I think about, you know, marriage and seven kids and I'm just thinking there was no way I could figure this out and be successful by myself that I know it's all about Jesus and that's why we are where we are. That's why we're, we are where we are. It's all about Jesus. He's the one. He's the one that if you, you say, okay, God, um, I'll do it your way. He'll lead you into paths of righteousness. He'll bring success to you. He'll, he'll bring fulfillment to you. He'll give you your heart's desire. All because you, you want to live for Him. Now, you hear that story of Kurt and Brenda, and you go, wow, how could this ever be? How can you go from stocking grocery shelves to being star NFL quarterback, winning Super Bowls? How, how can... How can that happen? Well, it happened because Kurt said, I'll, I'll let God, I'll stop having him be my spare tire. And, you know, you come on up front to the driver's seat. Now, God doesn't promise to everyone that you're going to be an NFL quarterback. He's made each one of us unique. And he's created good works for us to walk into. Good works that are uniquely made for you, that will bring you satisfaction, that will really fulfill your heart's desire. Now, each one of us comes to the table. You heard it from Brenda. We, we live in a fall, fallen world. so. Things are going to come at you. And for her, all kinds of things came at her where she had a special needs child. She had divorce. She had to walk through the death of her parents. She had a lot. But in all of that process, she had God with her. What about you? What about you? Do you have God with you? Do you have God guiding you? Do, you? do you listen to him every day? And do you say every day, God, not my will, but let your will be done? Do you trust him with your future? Do you trust him that he's got plans for you, that he wants to give you a hope in a future? Do you, do you trust all of that? Well, today, let today be the day you do that. And regardless if you've ever prayed this prayer before, you know, even, in, even as profession Christians, we have a tendency to drift away. And, and we want to do things our way. And, and we get frustrated sometimes. But today, if you'll just turn it over to Him and trust Him, then He'll do it.
He'll come through for you. So right now, if this is for you, bow your head with me. Pray a very simple prayer and let God do all the rest for you. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, that's right, say it out loud. Lord Jesus, I come to you today and Jesus, I turn my life over to you and I ask that you would guide me that you would protect me, that you would be with me. And Jesus, I proclaim right now that I want to follow you all the days of my life. Forgive me for the times that I've gone my own way, that I've left you, and restore me now and be with me now. Do all of this for me, for I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just prayed with me, and if this was the first time that you've prayed it, we've got a free packet for you. It's called A New Day, and in there, teaching on how to live the Christian life. There's also a booklet filled with Bible verses. Uh, and if you want somebody to pray with you, you've got specific things that you want to be unburdened of and want to know if God can forgive you. Uh, we're here for you. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call. 1-800-759-0700. Terry, over to you. Coming up, country music took Larry Gatlin to the top of the world and to the bottom. My end was uh, taking lint out of a, a carpet, thinking it was cocaine, snorting lint from, you know, and putting it in a free base pipe. Larry shares the rest of his pilgrimage after this. Come. Everywhere I turn, people are talking about gold prices. Gold has risen to new records, and gold prices have tripled over the last six years. In fact, gold prices have increased every year for the past 10 years. Isn't it time you considered adding gold to your portfolio? It's easy to own gold that can be delivered directly to you. Call Goldline now and speak with an account executive. They'll walk you through the steps to get started and answer any questions you may have. Call Goldline for your free investor's kit. It provides important information about gold and shows you how to get started. Our account executives can answer your questions and discuss our products, like the popular European gold coins. If you've been thinking about owning gold but don't know how, call Goldline, a company that's been helping investors like you acquire gold for 50 years. Give us a call today and learn why gold should be a part of your portfolio. For a limited time, we'll include a CD from noted economist Philip Clapwick, who reveals important insights on the gold market that every potential buyer should know. Call today. Welcome back to the 700 Club. The Obama administration is calling on the United Nations to fight for gay rights around the world. In a declaration at the UN Human Rights Council, the U.S. asked governments to review how homosexuals are treated and it urged the end of criminal punishments on lesbians, gays, and bisexuals. The document says people must be freed from discrimination based on sexual orientation, but acknowledges that, quote, these are sensitive issues for many. 
A group of Regent University students is working to fund food banks for families in Niger. The students are members of Regent's Students in Free Enterprise. They struck up a partnership with Operation Blessing, and using a grant awarded to them by Campbell Soup Company, students hosted events in the community and did projects on campus. They were able to raise enough money to fund one seed bank, and they're well on their way to funding a second. Each bank serves around 700 people. You can find out more about Operation Blessing by going to its website at ob.org. We'll be right back. John Mapes is 42. Mortgage, married, two great kids. He wants to protect his family with a $500,000 term life insurance policy. What do you think it'll cost him? $100 a month? 60? 40? Actually, none of the above. John can get a $500,000 policy from a highly rated insurer for under $25 a month. His secret? Select Quote. Select Quote is impartial. They'll search the pick of insurers like these to give you a choice of your best prices. Select Quote has great savings on term life for women, too. John's wife, Carrie, can get a $500,000 policy for under $16 a month. Select Quote has helped make term life insurance affordable for hundreds of thousands of people since 1985. How about you? Just call this number or visit SelectQuote.com. Call 1-800-590-7491. Country music fans have no problem recognizing Larry Gatlin. But as Larry told Scott Ross, one night as he looked into the mirror, Larry didn't recognize himself.
news. Well, Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin brothers have released their first album in almost two decades. It's called Pilgrimage, and you can get it wherever CDs are sold. I know you'll enjoy it. Well, when we come back, Terry and I will be praying for you and your needs right after this. Up next, bad news after surgery. You're never going to speak again above a whisper. A praying husband. God spoke to me and says she is going to be fine. A believing wife. I'm going to believe for total healing. And the impossible outcome. This is an absolutely a miracle what took place. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. I was in a lot of pain. I remember feeling, I don't want to have cancer. Why is this happening? I went to pray with my 10-year-old. He said that he wished he had two hearts because one of them was breaking. I had to reassure her a lot that I'm going to be okay. Things are going to be all right. You know, God's on our side. This is one thing that Cancer Treatment Center does for people. They give them the courage and the strength to battle cancer. When you first walk in that building, you almost feel like there's the presence of the Holy Spirit. It is about the patient. It is only about the patient. And what is it that they need and what do they want? Call now and we'll send you this free DVD that shows you how our very special team of experts and caregivers put you at the center of everything we do. Hope is alive at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. I don't really see how anyone can get through a life-threatening disease without the Lord in their life. He gives us the strength that we need to carry on. Aurea McGrary hosts a TV show in the Atlanta area. Her voice is heard by thousands of people, and that's incredible, because after she had surgery for cancers, doctors told her that she would never speak above a whisper. Aurea McGarry suffered from chest pains for almost a year before she received a grim prognosis from her doctor. And they told me that they found something in the x-ray and the blood work doesn't look good. So we think it's some type of cancer, but we don't know for sure. My mom had just died of cancer the year earlier, or a few years earlier. So when I heard the word cancer, I thought death. You marry the most beautiful woman in the world, and all of a sudden, that can be taken away from you in a split second. This cancer is invading our life. I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. My whole world just came crashing to a halt. I thought I was going to lose her. At that moment, I said, I'm going to believe for a miracle. I'm going to believe for total healing. Because I've heard of people getting instant healing. And I kept thinking, well, I can do that too. I believe. My pastor was there praying. My husband was praying. We had called 700 Club to pray. And it's amazing. As soon as I called the 700 Club, I felt just so much peace. It was the most amazing thing. I was just a wreck before I called, but as soon as I called them, it gave me the relief that I needed. It gave me the strength that I never thought I could have. The doctors removed the cancer from her, but as she woke from the surgery, they delivered more bad news. We had to take out the lining around your heart, disconnect half your diaphragm, and we had to remove one of the left nerves to your vocal cords, and you're never gonna speak again above a whisper. It would be impossible. Aurea began six months of intense chemotherapy to kill any remaining cancer cells. Really getting really sick, and the doctor, I overheard him say, this is sickest patient that we have ever had. Chemo uh, almost killed me. My doctor said that the cancer's curable, but the chemo was the real struggle. The prayers of her friends and family became a source of hope during her toughest moments. When I was lying on the floor in the bathroom, just wrapped around the toilet bowl. He'd be on the phone. I could hear him agreeing in prayer on the, the phone with the 700 Club. And he didn't stop picking up that phone and praying all days, hours of the, of the six months that I was in chemo, along with all of our friends and family and pastors. That meant a lot to us. 
And I, you know what? When you're sick, you really do feel the prayers. I felt a real warmth and that peace that passes all understanding. I knew it was going to be okay. Doctors finally said Aurea's cancer was gone, but unfortunately, so was her voice. But I kept praying, kept staying in prayer that her voice would be restored. I says, I don't know how long it's going to take, but it'll be restored. God spoke to me and says, she is going to be fine. And I couldn't speak for almost a year. I was really, really bad, very faint. Couldn't even make a phone call because people would hang up on me thinking it was an obscene phone call. But about a year or so later, my voice starts coming back. And before you know it, I just realized I'm talking. And it kind of like one of those aha moments. This is a really a lot better. And I went back every year to my doctor to get my checkup. And they're like, you're sounding good. You're sounding good. I'm like, yeah, and I'm not supposed to. So I'm a testimony of miracles happen in God's timing, not in our instant, you know, God, can you do this for me and do it now? Doctors said this was impossible that she would not speak no more than a whisper. And this is an absolutely a miracle what took place. And so, I believe in miracles. Today, Aurea and Brian produce a TV show in the Atlanta area. Her voice can be heard encouraging people to expect the miraculous in their lives, too. Anytime somebody says, that can't be done, that's impossible, that's an opportunity for God to show how great He really is. I don't believe in impossible, no matter what it is, because in God's eyes, He can do anything. All things can be done through Jesus Christ. You can be healed. Your drug addiction can be healed. Your cancer can be healed. Your stress can be healed. God wants us to make it very simple. Believe in Him and believe in His Word and everything can, be, uh, everything can happen. Believe in Him, believe in His Word, and everything can, be ha ha everything can happen. You know, it's simple. We, we want to make it complicated. You know, we want to come up with you know, these little formulas. And, and then when it doesn't happen immediately, uh, we then start expressing all our doubts. And we start saying, well, you know, have I tithed enough? Have, is there anybody I need to forgive? Is there any, you know, all these other things that are, you know, what's blocking it? What, and instead of just being just like little children to say, Daddy, I believe in you. I trust in you. Who's the uh, father of our faith? His name is Abraham, and God gave him a promise, and it took years, years for it to come to pass. And here's what the Bible says about Abraham, that he did not consider the deadness of his own body, but he was fully persuaded that he who had promised was able. And you look at the McGrary's, and here, Doctors are saying, you'll never speak. It's just not going to happen. And they didn't consider the deadness of her vocal cords. They didn't consider the impact of the chemotherapy that never entered into their minds, that this was permanent. What entered into their minds? With God, all things are, are possible. There's nothing impossible for him. When man says it's impossible, that just means it's more opportunity for God's glory to shine through. Now, what about you? What about you? Today, are you willing to just trust God? Are you willing to trust His timing? Now, that, that's a tough one sometimes, where the healing process has started, but it's going to take a while. For the McGrary's, it took a year. You know, it took a surgery, too. What about you? What about you? Are you going to continue to believe in spite of things, in spite of the deadness of your own body? Are you still going to believe? Now, we're going to pray. You know, we're going to believe with you. The Bible says if two or more agree touching anything, it shall be done. Before we pray, though, we want to encourage you with some more miracles that have happened to people who just decided to believe. And here's Margie from Destin, Florida. She began having terrible headaches, problems with her memory. Neurologist found she had too many strokes 10 years earlier. And his diagnosis, his prognosis was dementia and then Alzheimer's. Well, that is a prognosis that means death.
Margie was watching the 700 Club. Terry, you had a word of knowledge. There's someone you've been suffering from a lot of mental confusion and you fear that it's Alzheimer's or dementia. God is correcting that deficiency in your body and it's all going to go away. Well, Margie instantly felt a jolt go through her body. When she went back to the neurologist, he couldn't find anything wrong with her brain. Margie says her memory is excellent. And that is an incredible miracle. Wow. That is. Hallelujah. Wow. God is good. Well, here's another one. This is Ebenezer. He's an Army officer in Fort Drum, New York. He hurt his left knee in training, and it became painful and swollen. Doctors couldn't find the cause of the problem, so every day for a year he had to deal with the pain and swelling. Then one day he was watching this program, and Gordon, you mm. gave this word of knowledge. You said, there's a man. You're praying for your left knee. You just spoke to that knee. Work. You have pain in it. You have swelling in it. God is healing you right now. Stand up and do what you couldn't do before. Ebenezer said he felt a sensation flowing in and around his left knee. Then he began to jump up and down. The swelling and the pain were completely wow. gone. Praise God. Amen. That can happen to you. That can happen to you, and it can happen right now. All it takes is that we believe. We come to him and we say, we believe. We believe you're God. We believe that when you speak, you're not lying. When you're, you're fully able to do that which you've promised to do. And then you're fully willing to do that which you promised to do. And there's nothing blocking you from the love of Jesus Christ being poured out over you and in you. Let his love, his forgiveness, his mercy, and just be fully convinced that there's nothing separating you from the love of Christ. Nothing. You're right there with him. Just reach out and realize he's reaching out to you. And when you touch him, you get all the healing power you need. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Lord God, we just join with those in the audience who are asking for healing, wanting a miracle today. And we just speak over them, we proclaim over them. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of restoration. Today is the day for their miracle. And we join with them. And in an act of faith, we just with them are laying hands on their bodies right now. And we're saying out loud, be healed and be made whole. Uh, there's someone you've got a ruptured uh, tendon in the back of your leg, a hamstring. And it's the burning pain is just overwhelming, and God is healing that for you. He's, he's literally able to rejoin things, and he's doing that, and that pain just left you now. Instantly, it's gone. In Jesus' name, be healed. If someone, you heard the report about the man on his left knee, and you've got a problem with your left knee, and you're doing exactly what you just heard, and you're saying to that knee, be healed. Work now, in Jesus' name. And that is, is, it's like your whole knee's being restored mm -hmm. and the cushion is being put back in. Uh, the meniscus is being restored and it's no longer bone on bone. You're, you're, you're being, it's a tremendous miracle. You're feeling it right now. Mm -hmm. Go into your knee and you're healed. Do what you couldn't do before. Begin moving it now. Stand up on it and realize the great miracle that just happened to you. Terry? There's a woman. Um, your nickname is Charlie, and you have been praying and praying about something, and you have just reached such a point of discouragement. God is saying to you today, Charlie, that he has heard your lament. He has seen your tears. He knows your need. He knows your sorrow, and he is moving powerfully on your behalf right now. Just receive that. Receive that affirmation in God's love. Also, someone else, you have a, a problem underneath your tongue. You have something with the, um, like your saliva glands. You've been diagnosed with something. It's not a good diagnosis. God is healing that condition for you. Um, there's a lady named Amanda. You're laying your hands on your abdomen, and you're asking God, heal mm -hmm. uh, my uh, ovaries and, and give me a baby. And God's heard your prayer. He's, he's responding. And you're healed now. 
and he's going to give you your heart's desire. He's going to give you that baby. Just believe in him now. Believe it. Someone else, you're praying for money for school right now. You want to go on to your master's and you don't have the money to do it. God's going to provide that in a miraculous way for you. Watch with expectancy. Hmm. Uh, there's someone you've got an um, unusual condition that causes a, a wasting away of the cartilage. Hmm. And um, it's, it's in your joints. Um, and God's heard your cry. He's restoring all of that to you now. And that, that spirit of infirmity, we just bind it now in Jesus' name. You have no power here. You must leave. In Jesus' name, be gone and be made whole. Lord, we thank you, for you are our healer. When we receive you, we receive all the healing power we need. And so, Lord, for those that we didn't get specific words, we just claim over them your word, where you forgive all our iniquities, and you heal all our diseases. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you've been touched by God, we want to share in your good report, so give us a call, 1-800-759-0700. And if you want someone to pray specifically for you and ask for healing, call us, 1-800-759-0700. We leave you with these words from Psalms. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he sent his word and healed them. God bless you. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about what may be God's best for you. In the new DVD, The Law of Expectation from Pat and Gordon Robertson, Pat shares the essential truth that enables you to receive the favor of God. God knows who you are. He knows everything about you. And God says, I love you, and here's what I want to do for you. Pat and Gordon Robertson bring you powerful principles of thought and behavior that can transform your life. Experience the joy of realizing your dreams, the power of finding purpose in your life, and the fulfillment that comes from building a deeper relationship with God. You'll see prosperity in your life. You'll see blessing in your life. Why? Because of God's favor. Get the law of expectation and experience the wonderful blessing God has for you. Available now.